Hello, and welcome to Lessons with Laurie, where we're looking at some of the big ideas and concepts in mathematics, kindergarten through grade five. In the last lesson, we began our, our discussion of the data and measurement strand in the curriculum, and data and measurement then morphs into statistics and data in the high school level. In the last lesson, we looked at categorical data, and we were able to display that categorical data in both a picture graph and a bar graph. Well, now today in this lesson, I want to look at some measurement data and what we can do in terms of measurement and connect it to uh, being able to display it. You see in front of me, I have eight glasses, and these glasses share some different attributes with one another. The attribute that I've used in terms of organizing my glasses here is the attribute of height. I've arranged the glasses in order from shortest to tallest. Well, when we have students work with data in the classroom, we want to make sure that the data set is large enough so that when they go to display it in some sort of graph or plot, there's something interesting to look at. Well, if I only had two glasses here, it wouldn't make for a very interesting graph once I, um, once I made it. So I want to have at least 10 pieces of data. So my 10 glasses are already arranged in order from shortest to tallest. And now I want to have students measure the attribute of height and measure it either to the nearest inch or some other unit. Generally, around first or second grade, sometimes a little bit later, students are introduced to the measurement system of inches and also uh, the metric centimeter. Later on, we'd have students measuring to the nearest half inch or to the nearest half centimeter. So I have data, meaning I have objects here that I want to measure the attribute of height. When I talk about data, I want to be able to organize it and sort it if necessary display it, and then also interpret what that display says to us. So let's get started. I used my ruler to measure the height of each one of these glasses to the nearest inch, and I recorded them. I now want to be able to make what's referred to as a line plot. So let's take a look at a line plot. A line plot is simply a number line, and notice its features. I have scaled it with equal increments here from 1 through 10, equal spacing along here. Because I've already measured, I then made a line plot, and this is what it looked like. Each X that you see in this line plot represents the height of one of my glasses. You can see that I have one glass that was two inches tall. I had five glasses that were four inches tall, two glasses that were five inches tall. I had a glass that was eight inches and a glass that was nine inches tall. So each X represents the height of one of my 10 glasses. How would I now ask students to interpret this? Because once we've just measured and displayed it, we also want them to be able to use some vocabulary to describe it. So I might listen for them identifying the shortest and the tallest. Maybe they would say there are a lot of glasses. As a matter of fact, there are seven glasses that were four or five inches tall. We call that a cluster of data right here. Then there's this gap in here even though there's a short gap right here, there's a larger gap right here, meaning there were no glasses that measured between five and eight inches tall. So that's a line plot for the attribute of height for these 10 different glasses here. Well, I'm kind of curious, what would the plot look like if we were to measure it in centimeters versus in inches? So again, taking the ruler and measuring the height of each one of these glasses and measuring it to the nearest centimeter. Well, when I measured, I have a new line plot and there's something different about this line plot that I'd like you to notice. Instead of writing every one of the numbers between four and 24, notice that I have written only the even numbers here. 
Well, I wrote only the even numbers because I know that for young students, it's difficult for them to write numbers small enough so that they would be clear about what the numbers are in between here. So I only use the even numbers. The other alternative is I could have made this number line much longer, made this axis much longer so that the spacing between them would be a little bit longer. And that way students would be able to record every single number. But I chose to record only the even numbers. Can students still identify where the number 15 would be? Can they still identify where the number 21 would be? Well, I have measured in centimeters now, and this is what my plot looks like. It has similar attributes to the previous graph. Notice that my height is in centimeters now, but it has similarities to the line plot that I made when I measured to the nearest inch. I still have the shortest being here at six centimeters. I had two out here that were at the end. My two wine glasses were 21 and 22 centimeters tall. And then I still have this cluster in the middle. I have seven glasses here that measured between nine centimeters and 13 centimeters tall. And again, there's still this gap in the data. So when I compare these two graphs side by side now, these two line plots, notice that they do have similar attributes in terms of their display. I see the shortest and the tallest. I see a cluster in each one of these graphs, and I also see a gap in those graphs. Well, one other point I wanna make about a line plot is that students will often say to me, gee, Laurie, that, that line plot looks an awful lot like a bar graph. Well, you can see that if I were to make a rectangle around this, it would look like a bar. And so this would look like a vertical bar graph and its height would tell me the same. So it's a, a, I would be able to interpret, it, interpret the heights the same way I would the, the height of the bar here. If I turn it sideways, I have a vertical bar graph now. So students sometimes will make that connection between a bar graph and the line plot. Well, one of the interesting things that, about my glasses is that there is more than one attribute that could be measured. We measured their heights in terms of two different units, inches and centimeters. There are other attributes, however, that could be measured. And in this instance, you might be curious about capacity or the liquid volume that each one of them has. They're arranged right now in terms of their heights. I might ask my child to rearrange them so that they are arranged in terms of their liquid volume or their capacity. Which one holds the least amount of water? Which one holds the greatest amount of water? I look at these two glasses right here, they have about the same height. Do they have the same capacity? These two glasses here have about the same height. Do they have the same capacity? Are there, any, are there any glasses that have very different heights, but perhaps the same capacity? So I did do some measurement. I filled them each with water. I used my uh, measuring device that I use for making salad dressing. And on one side, I have the fluid ounces. And on the other side, I could have measured in milliliters. I measured in fluid ounces. And I recorded the data but now I recorded the, the data in terms of the order in which they were measured. I measured this glass first, this glass last. And this is the raw data for those 10 glasses. Do you see anything interesting in terms of their liquid volume, in terms of their capacity? They're no longer in order. Well, I can still make a line plot, and here's my line plot for their capacity. Notice that I have two glasses that had the same capacity. They had a volume or a liquid volume of two fluid ounces. I had one that had a capacity of 21 fluid ounces. Do you think this one right here, this 14, also was the same in terms of its height, meaning 
you can see from up here, I've already given away the answer, that 14 here is not very tall. It was right in the middle of the data, as a matter of fact. So in terms of graphing this, you can see you're making the plot. This one actually has a volume that is greater than this one out here, even though it is half its height. So look for objects around your house that your, your children can measure in terms of some attribute. It's even more interesting if those objects have more than one attribute that can be measured, height and liquid capacity here or liquid volume. So I hope that you have some uh, ideas now about different ways in which you could gather data, be able to sort it and organize it, display it in some sort of plot or graph, and then do that next step of asking them to interpret it. So thank you for being with me. See you next time.